Good morning and thank you for joining us. Man, what an honor to have you sitting that side of the screen and tuning in. Like, you know, you, we always say uh, life is better connected and thank you for connecting with us. Before I jump into today's message, I just want to right up front thank all of you who sow into this ministry. We are so blessed by your generosity. Thank you for supporting us and for loving us in that way. Right. Today's message might be considered a bit of a dark topic, okay? But just stick with me. The light will shine brightly at the end. I promise you that. Just hang in there. Now, I don't know about you, but every now and again, I go through these times where you know I'm battling to sleep and my brain won't switch off and I've counted all the sheep, but I'm just like, just cannot stop thinking about things and worrying about things. It's, it's like the brain just doesn't want to go into, into sleep mode. Um, I can't even get into my screensaver mode that I'm usually in. Like, uh, it, It's just like I'm battling and I'm really battling. And you're thinking about all sorts of things and worrying about things that are probably never going to happen. Okay, so that's the one scenario. Then there's other days and other nights where I feel the heaviness. And it's almost like, you know, I don't know what depression feels like, but I'm sure it feels like that. It's almost like I've got all these negative thoughts and um, everything just feels negative and hope feels like it's out there and it's not close to me anymore. Uh, feels like I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders and help is distant and and I don't feel like doing this what I'm doing anymore uh, I feel like it's all too much and I question myself is it worth it and um, will things ever change and you know I think about people and what they have done to me or how they've affected me I look at life and sort of just feel like all washed up after a storm, you know, like the beach looks and my life looks like that and feels like that. Um, no energy. I'm like really down and out and just want to be left alone. Now, I hope there's at least one of you out there who also has these experiences. Otherwise, I'm poorly pouring all of this out for, for no reason. I've also got a third scenario where I found myself and that is when it seems to me like God is absent. Like I'm asking God, where are you? God, why has this happened? God, are you here? If you love me, why am I dealing with all of this stuff? Why, why are these situations? Why does it feel like I'm being pounded by one wave after the other? God, where are you? I'm sick, Lord, of living in the valley. I also want to be on the mountaintop and just be able to breathe again and relax again. God, are you even part of my life? Have you perhaps been there, this wilderness experience? I'll admit I have. And I call these nights or these times. Now, this is like, sounds like a classic title for some sort of horror movie, but it's what was laid on my heart. I call these times dark night of the soul. Those nights, those times in your life, it might be a few days, it might be weeks, it might be months, when it seems like the devil is winning. When it seems like there's, there's a never end. You know when you lay awake at night and, and the time goes so slow, it looks like the sun is just never going to come up? Well, it's the same in these times, these dark nights that we have, even in our walk with God, where God seems far away. And I want you to take note to what I said, where God seems far away, because we think he is. But we know and we've got evidence that God is always near to us. You see, in times like this, I pray. I don't get answers. I read 
verses. I attend church. I do activities. I still go to my connect group. But I'm not feeling a connection with God. It's almost like the title of that movie. Well, the title of the movie was God is not dead, but we almost feel like, you know, God is dead. Like, where is he? And I question God in those times. And I question my faith in those times. I question myself as a supposed child of God. Like, questions like, why do I sin? Why do I battle with this? Why are my prayers not being answered? And I sort of overanalyze myself then. And those lists of the questions you ask, they go on and on and on and on. And I'm in the spiritual wilderness and there's no water in sight, let alone the living water. I feel nothing, I see nothing, and I feel quite alone. I feel deserted. During those times, guess what I do? Which I assume most of you do. I put on this mask and I act as if everything is okay because I don't want to speak about where I am because you and other people might think a little bit less of me. I mean, how is it possible? I wear this mask. I carry on coming to church. I carry on serving where I serve. I do what I need to do because I don't want other people to know where I am at. Ladies, gentlemen, these are very real situations that happen to all of us at one stage or another. And you and I don't really know how to deal with these dark nights of the soul because we hardly ever talk about it in church it's like a subject that is taboo you don't talk about it let alone the pastor admit that look at he's like feeling a little bit left out of everything and he's wondering where god is we don't talk about those things yet they impact all of us i've been there and i've been at points where i wanted to give up I've been at times where I thought, is this all worth it? And I've even had the question, God, where are you? It's not foreign to us as believers. We just don't talk about it. And when we're in those positions, you know, we think that 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 it's a it's a sign of feeble faith if we cry out to God in those times, like the Bible calls it, lament. You pour out your heart in agony before God. We think of it as a weakness, like surely we should have the strong faith. We shouldn't be complaining. Uh, good Christians, good believers do not complain, and they certainly don't complain to God, and they definitely do not doubt God. You know, these people that you look at and you think their faith never wavers and they are so strong and man, believe me, they're going through the same things, just no one talks about it. And when we're in that position, we're really hesitant to get honest before God about where we are, to express our feelings to God. And I don't understand why, because God already knows what we're thinking, what we're feeling. But when we approach him with these things, it like brings God into the midst of that situation. And it helps us find a way out of it. I want to tell you now, if you find yourself there, it is healthy. It is good for you physically emotionally and spiritually to pour out your pain it's therapeutic and God knows it all anyway so when you feel like that just go and lie face down before God cry lament moan groan God does not mind because he wants to help us through that area we find ourselves in and don't think you're some sort of superhuman. You can't have those emotions. You can't have those times. King David, and you know what he was called? A man after God's own heart. 
Can I give you a few of the references from the Psalms he wrote? Psalm 10, he begins by saying, Why, O Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? You see, if it was weak to feel like this, then King David, this man of the God's own heart, was probably the weakest believer of all time because it doesn't end there. Psalm 13. And I only chose a few, only a few, there's many more. Psalm 13 says, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Psalm 22, he goes, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. Psalm 42, where can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food for day and night. Psalm 88, I cry to you for help, O Lord. Why, O Lord, do you reject me and hide your face from me. These are such real earthy psalms and we can see the heart of David in these psalms when he was having a dark night of the soul. We don't often read them because like it's not supposed to be like that. Well the reality is life is like that and I think it shows inner strength when you can admit your weakness or you can own up and say man I'm in a bad place spiritually I need help because if you don't it's like you when you bottle the stuff up it stinks in here it stagnates and it begins to affect every area of your life it if it infects your heart and, and and your thoughts and your actions we need to get this stuff out so it can be addressed by God and not pollute who we are as human beings now I know sometimes when things happen when you got these circumstances when you've been through the loss of a loved one or you're struggling in your business or your relationships and it's like one thing after another and you got this unrelenting pain and maybe physical be emotional when you've been dealing with heartaches and bitter disappointments and life has confused you and you've been calling God into question I know that in those times God's love and his providential care his all-encompassing care can sustain you when you cry out to him all of that doesn't go away. But we shouldn't be confused about the power of God to do something in those situations. We shouldn't let our situation disqualify our ability to call God or ask God into that situation. Because that's the only real place you can go to, is God. And if you are, are disqualifying God because you're now thinking to yourself, man, I've been praying, I've got all these unanswered prayers, I've been asking how long, oh God, is this going to last? I've been asking where are you, God? And you think that justifies you not um, breaking down before God. You're going to miss the very help that would come from God. And you then, I don't want to say stop, you almost put the brakes on God's willingness to intervene on your behalf because you're not asking him into the depth of that dark night of the soul that you're experiencing. And I don't know what it is. I do know that in dark times, our faith gets tested. I do know that sometimes questions arise about God. I do know that adequate answers aren't always forthcoming. But I also know that someone like David, who was in the line of Jesus, okay, 
he was the first king that was really operating under the will of God. He was a man that was full of many faults, yet he was a man surrendered to God. I know that he had nights like that, he had dark periods like that, but I also know that he got through them. And when I read of his psalms, and I focus on how he responded to God after these laments of his to God, then I get hope for me and my situation. Because this is how David approached it. And it's very important how you handle things in these times. Okay, listen, this is important. It says in Psalm 13 verse 5, But I trust in your unfailing love. My heart rejoices in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord, for he has been good to me. What's David saying? Saying focus on what has been done. Look at the past and see now God has been good to you. Focus on that. Even though your heart doesn't feel, still worship God. Even though your, your, your mind is questioning God, still honor God. Do the things that you need to keep doing, the godly things. If you became a pilot, for argument's sake, okay, you know what? They don't only teach you to fly by day, but they teach you to fly when it's dark, when they teach you to fly by the instruments. You need to be able to to land a plane or take off a plane or direct a plane when things are dark by going back to what you know, looking at what is in front of you. And it's the same with your faith. When things are dark, go look at the instruments. Go back to what is known to you. Learn to fly state by flying by the word of God. Get back to those basics. That pilot has to absolutely trust those instruments. And we in our times, our dark times, need to absolutely trust that God is in control and that we can still count on His Word. So we keep reading His Word. We keep going to church. We keep praying. We keep serving. We keep going to our, our, our connect groups because those are our instruments. And God will guide us through those instruments. And a time will come when the sun rises on you and on your situation and the full light of Christ will shine into every area that seems dark to you. But then you've got to keep doing the things that connect you to God. Now I wish I could tell you this. This is going to be easy, okay? Follow step one, two, three, and, you know, it's all going to be finished. But the fact is, I don't know how long your dark night's going to last. I don't know if it's going to be a day, a month, because time differs for every single person. What I do know is if we continue doing certain things, a breakthrough comes sooner rather than later. And I was reading a, a article by um, Robert Stackpole, and it was sort of an, he gave an emergency dark soul kit, okay, if I can put it that way. And he said there's a few things that you need to keep doing during this time. Number one is you've got to trust in the objective truth of the gospel. So you've got to read the gospel and say, look, according to the word of God, you know, Jesus is still the light of the world, so he will shine in my situation. According to the word of God, I'm adopted into a family. My father's not going to neglect me. According to the word of God, my prayers will be answered. According to the word of God, I've already got victory over this. You've got to believe the absolute truth of the gospel and trust in it. Secondly, very practical advice. During these times of darkness in your life, take good care of yourself. Take good care of you like you know Jesus would want you to take care of yourself. Get rest. Eat properly. Pay proper medical attention to your body. Make time for recreation, 
for 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 fun spend time with friends spend time in nature yeah, nature's got this remarkable ability to heal us because it was created by the creator to 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 direct us towards him because all nature just it, it shows the glory of God I love to go and just go into the mountains go sit by the sea just pot the I don't pot in the garden I look at the garden but getting close to where God's hands have been intricately working in nature it helps me and I'm sure it will help you number three keep doing something useful for someone else the first thing we do when we feel a bit down, we stop. Like, uh, I don't really have the energy to sow into people's lives. I'm not going to be doing that for this one anymore. Keep doing those things. Part of what God asks us to do is to love Him and love others. When you neglect either of those two, it affects you in your innermost. So keep doing those things. And if they don't help, which I'm sure they're going to. But another thing you can do is you can get to a place where you can talk to someone, you can open your heart, and you can be honest. We must get past this, I'm concerned what other people will think about me. And that is why I love it when people belong to a connect group, a life group, a small group. That's a small family unit. And there you should be comfortable to be honest and those people will help you, they'll pray for you, they'll guide you. That is what we need. If you don't have that, find someone who you can trust, who's not going to talk out. Go to your pastor or find a counsellor at the church. Just get help. This emergency dark kit, man, I think it's so important. Trust in the gospel. Take care of yourself and carry on serving and as a last resort, no, not as a last resort, as a next step, talk to someone. Excellent advice. What also helps is we did a series recently on habits and you can find it on YouTube and Facebook. I think it was a five part on habits. Really good. And, and in there we said we need to develop healthy habits. Now I know some of the habits that we get into during these times that we shouldn't be doing. I know what is not beneficial for, for, for you during these dark nights of the soul. And what's not beneficial is lack of sleep. Overanalyzing. Giving up. Tuning out. Okay, like, I refuse to deal with this. Ignoring advice. Drawing within yourself. Thinking it's only you going through all of this stuff and believing it will never end. Those are things to avoid. I know that through my personal experience, when I've been in the wilderness, when I asked the question, God, where are you? I look back and I come to a realization that God is not dead. God is working on the inside and He's alive. And even when, when I don't feel it, He was working and He was moving. He was loving and He was restoring. The only thing that helped me get through those times was me taking all my faith and putting it back where it belongs, in God, holding on to the hem of His robe, no matter how hard that journey got, and it always got me through. You don't need to camp out there. There's a way out, and it's only by going back to the one who said from the beginning, He will lead you, He will guide you, He will be the lamp unto your feet. Go to God in the darkest times. Hold on. Push through and you will see the glory of His light in your life. hope this has been meaningful and it helped you. Please heed this advice. Own up 
Don't be shy about where you are at. We all go through it. Own up. Take hold of, of this situation, this mindset. Give it to God. And I'm confident we're going to see miracles in your life. Amen. Lord, I just want to pray for these people listening and ask, Father, that you bind up their broken hearts now. You open eyes that have become closed to you because of situations, because of feelings. You would open those eyes and every single person will see the glory of the living God in the land of the living, Lord. While we walk and talk and breathe we will see your glory in our lives lord we don't have to wait for one day we give you our entire life every difficult situation every wilderness experience lord we submit to you and thank you for your glorious light coming into our lives we pray this in jesus name amen thank you so much for joining us please share the message and thanks again if you're sowing into this ministry. We really do appreciate you. Be blessed.